It's such a chunky deck. The 46 cards. Getting two clashes done? Oh my. How good. How good. Pretty iffy starting options here. Take damage for a random rare relic. Very questionable, although not bad against Slime Boss. Looks like an act we're going to need every health point we can get, though, is the thing. Hmm. Two paths present to me. Option A. I like the shop on this one. Option B. Something like that. Left side here, we get more early rest sites. We get a shop to potentially replenish potions at. Red path gets the burning elite done act one, which is nice. Ultimately, three elites on each path. Uh, we could avoid the first elite if we wanted to. Either way, we have a few starting nodes in common. I think either max health plus six or transform is pretty good for this start. I'd probably like to transform it in one of our defend cards. Into a new random silent card. Let's do that. Transforming a defend instead of a strike, because you need the strikes early game to form the core of your damage as silent. I'm actually extremely happy with a Masterful Stab. Zero cost, deal 12 damage. Each time we lose health, the Masterful Stab goes up in price, but just as an upfront, front-loaded attack card, it sure is good, particularly here in Act 1, so I'm exceptionally happy with that as a transform. A truly good start. We're down one starter card, we're up one good early offensive card. Can't complain about that. And an early blade dance is also quite nice. Another 12 damage card. Add three shivs to your hand. The more relics you get, the better cards like blade dance are for the silent. Shivs on their own are okay, but if you add relics or powers that synergize with them, they get out of control really quickly. The good kind of out of control, that is. And the more front-loaded damage we add to our deck, the more capable Silent is of just dealing with threats up front and not taking much damage at all. Yeah. Beautiful. Dash is another early powerful attack. Damage and block for two mana. Uh, is really nice for Act 1 Elites in particular. Pairs nicely with the Masterful Stab, too. Endless Agony is like an 8 damage, 0 cost card is how I like to look at it. Better than Slice a lot, a lot of the time. Flying Knee Reusable gives us energy next turn. And notably is a common we haven't mastered yet, but I think is far inferior to Dash when it comes to getting out of Act 1 here. We might be on track to go Red Path here. I'm still eyeing that store. An early remove, transform, or upgrade. Oh my. An extra upgrade can really help you get ahead of the game. Upgrading dash for three damage, three block looks particularly appealing. But we could also consider upgrading blade dance or masterful stab. Stooks, thanks for two months. Happy Tuesday. To you. I think we'll be fine with Red Path now. Let's do it. Hiya! Still no potion. 
second shiv card, but it's not a very good shiv card. Still, with one defend removed, I'm, I'm okay with a cloak and dagger. Sure. Would I ever go remove on that event early on? Usually not, but uh, it can be correct if you've added some decent... damage already. I'd say usually you only want to remove if you're able to defeat your act boss with the current deck. That's my criteria. This fight sucks, by the way. Yikes. Not enough damage to kill either of them. This thief might get away with my money. If we don't prioritize hitting the thief first. But the slime's going to do too much damage to us to win the act if we don't kill the slime first. So I'll cloak and dagger then. Yeah, Thief's going to get away with the money. Bummer. And a... F smoke bomb. Okay. So we go into the elite with this? I don't think I'm allowed to fight this elite now that we got no potions. Bummer. Let's just fight another hardpool fight. This looks a lot better. Imagine having block cards. Okay, that's a little bit better. Just a little bit. And yeah, with regards to that elite, I think it's just better to not try in the first place. Much rather have a node that actually does something for us, rather than put myself in a situation where I know I'm going to have to frivolously use the smoke bomb. No thanks. Okay, now we can fight an elite. With minus one defend, backflip feels pretty good. Dagger spray for some AoE going into slime boss is also worthy of consideration. And it's probably something I should pick, but I won't. Very happy with the happy flower. Energy every third turn. The advice for setting up a block engine. Block engine is, is secondary to the damage engine, of course. It's a lot easier in some cases to reduce enemy damage by picking off low health things than it is to actually block. But uh, when it comes to getting a block engine that actually works... Yeah, play this. You go to 30. We're never dealing with 30 next turn, huh? No, we're not. Okay, that's pretty good, actually. Thank you, Dash. Yeah, when it comes to getting a block engine that, that actually works, uh, having one or two upgraded block cards can go a long way. Just making sure your block cards block for more up front. Um, 
Anything that can increase the effect of your block cards. Dexterity from relics, dexterity from potions. When in doubt, card draw helps too. For a block engine to work well, you need to draw some block cards consistently. Um, uh, something I like to look at and evaluate often is the block density of the deck. How many cards in your deck are cards that actually produce block? You want this value to be between 30 to 50% of the cards in your deck. Lower than 30%-ish, and you'll struggle to draw hands that have any block cards in them at all. Higher than 50%, and you'll find yourself drawing card hands that contain only block cards, causing you to lose progress against enemies that set up. Free adrenaline, by the way. And we'll upgrade, I guess, the other blade dance. Hey there, Lagor. Welcome to the stream. Good to have you. Max health Lagavulin. Oof. With shivs? Oh boy. Oh, that is not good. Let's do some damage right now. Hmm. Okay, that's actually a really good draw next turn. Go Masterful Stab. Maybe Dash Backflip. So the Masterful Stab is reshuffled. Probably going to want to use the Dex Potion to full block too. I don't want to take any damage here so that the Masterful Stab stays cheap. I guess we go Backflip Dash? No, better to go Dash Backflip. This does eat more damage right now, but then... We reshuffle these two cards, and we don't draw two. It's a backflip. The idea being to get back to Masterful Stab much more quickly. 13 damage is better than two strikes. Ultimately, with the 12 damage Masterful Stab and the Dash Plus, I'm not too worried here. Although this draw could have been better. Might have to use Gambler's next turn. I'm really hoping we don't. Nope. That wasn't bad. That was not bad at all. Got an oddly smooth stone. One dexterity. Very useful. The Emerald Key. And Dagger Spray, Skewer, or Finisher. Finisher with Blade Dance and Cloak and Dagger is... Pretty powerful, actually. Sure. Good finisher draw could absolutely win the slime boss fight for us. Going into slime boss, I'd really like to see two potions, which makes me want to take more combats here. Let's take more combats here. The relics we have should make these fights pretty easy as well. Yeah, we just kill you. Easy. That's a good sign. Eviscerate. Flying knee. Dodge and roll. Dodge and roll's not bad with smooth stone. We don't have any discard to make eviscerate work. I'm gonna skip all these. Want another blade dance or something? I would even take an infinite blades here. Although I'd be deeply embarrassed by the action. Thirty-four is half health. Okay. So we don't play the last shiv. Two damage. Strike. Finisher. Beautiful. 
No second blade dance, but there is a second backflip. Pretty good with the smooth stone. Or a noxious fumes, which is kind of nice against slime boss. Double backflip with smooth stone actually seems kind of hype. Uh, but I do expect the slime boss will probably kill us. Probably. Resting is not a terrible idea here. I'm going to choose to upgrade Finisher. And we're going to hope that it lines up for a really powerful turn. But in the event that it doesn't, I'm okay. We do have a Gambler's Brew, though, so I, th I think there's a lot of hope. Less hope. A lot of damage this turn, though. 93 minus 5 is 88. Go to 80. Although, honestly, Neutralize, Strike, Strike, Finisher is pretty good still. We could try to Gambler's Brew to do something amazing, but I, I like having Gambler's Brew for second cycle. Adequate. Certainly adequate. We split at 37. That's doable. Especially with Happy Flower giving me plus one energy on this turn. Nice. We're gonna get frailed. It's actually weakened that we can't abide, so I'm gonna chip down the acid slime here. This will bring you to 18, which would split. Don't do that. Let's do this. Is this good enough? Seems pretty bad. Um, they dance 22. This is enough to split them both. In fact, maybe we just kill one of them outright to avoid splitting. Take 18 damage. Yeah, that might be better. And then just win. I think that's the play. Kill this one. Health is a resource. Easy. Okay. 18 is fine. GG. We made it. Two health into Act 2, but into Act 2 we are going. Flex Potion is very good with all the shivs. Phantasmal Killer says, next turn your attacks deal double damage. That's pretty potent here. Phantasmal Killer into Runic Pyramid, please. I can also see Die 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 being just some, some nice front load. But I'm taking a Phantasmal here. One of the best cards for making physical attacks do more on silence. Really needs Retain to work particularly well, but we could also go with several card removes like Astrolabe or Empty Cage and feel good. We get Hovering Kite, Ectoplasm, or Black Star for additional relics. Black Star it is, I suppose, but we're going to have a really difficult Act 2 to start. What happens if you play Phantasmal twice in one turn? You get two turns of double damage. This is how it works. Yeah, Flex Potion is one free fight, uh, hopefully one free elite fight. I agree it's not the worst Acto of all time, although it's pretty bad considering how much we'd like to remove these strikes. The additional energy is very meaningful with the backflips. But I can't. I refuse. I think Acto will be a, a slow, choking death. Oof, to these merchant locations. Looks 
looks like a two elite act. I think in this. We don't really want to get into the hard pool combats of Act 2, especially not with two potions. Darluck. You keep watching, I'll keep slaying. That's the deal. Something like this. Could go for these two elites, but I don't think we're going to make it through two elites before a shop. One elite at most. So, green path it is, I think. Really reliant on boat thingy to protect us here. Not a bad turn one. Or turn two. Plated armor be gone. Twenty four damage. One damage shield parasite, and we get a second flex potion. Honestly, that's pretty good. Also pretty good is dodge and roll here. Gain seven block this turn and seven block next turn. With a free upgrade, I'm gonna say yes to dodge and roll. Definitely a bit reliant on happy flower energy wise. That's okay. More than willing to use a flex potion to defeat the red mask gang. One week on turn one would actually be really helpful. And this is a great opening hand. Easy. Easy peasy. Bear yes. Kill Romeo here. We'd actually like to set up Happy Flower a little bit better, though. The two here. Good fight. We even get another potion, in this case a regen potion, which can heal us for up to 15. I wish acrobatics felt reasonable. Had we taken the black, uh, the hovering kite, it would be. But as things stand... We really can't afford it. Card removal is excellent. Ow. Let me use the regen potion here, although I think we might only heal two or three times from it. sure if that was worth it. Dan of London and the Dirty Dirk, thank you both for the incredible support. 16 and 18 months. Yeah, dodge and roll needs a, a really a boost to the base value. If you're just getting four block two turns from dodge and roll, it's it's not gonna cut it. But seven? Seven's a lot more than four. Seven will do. Seven will definitely, definitely do. I think we upgrade Adrenaline first, Phantasmal Killer second. With only three energy per turn, we really want any source that the deck can find for additional energy here. 
as we go into our first elite fight. Unfortunately, it's the Book of Stabbing, which is certainly the worst foe we could have fought. This is a pretty good turn for the Flex Potion. I can do Neutralize, Backstab, Blade Dance, Strike, Strike for an additional 40 damage off this Flex Potion. Although it might be able to do more with Phantasmal Killer on a future turn. Might be. We'll hold our breath. We'll do it. Definitely a very difficult single target opponent, this book really cause us some problems. We do get finisher next turn. Hopefully it's not bottom deck adrenaline. Hopefully not. It's not. Okay, good. Let's go cloak and dagger, then adrenaline. We can maybe redraw the cloak and dagger. Get one more draw alongside the finisher, and we're dealing double damage here. Perfect. Strike is uh, not quite the attack we were looking for, but it does the job. If I flex potion now, how much damage can I deal? We would deal an additional 10 per hit. So 18, 18, 22, and then 16 by 3. Let's do some quick math there. Plus 48. So we do 106 damage, which is not quite enough to fully kill. Or 26 by 3, excuse me. Uh, uh, oh, that does kill. Okay. Yes, yeah, so we can just kill it. Good. Oh, the tough bandages are here. We have not actually won a run with the tough bandages yet. Whenever we discard a card during our turn, gain three block. Currently only works with the survivor at the moment, but that could change real fast like. We're also offered in Venom Plus. When an attack deals unblocked damage, apply one poison. Interesting with the plus on it. Dagger throw works with the tough bandages. Definitely tempting to take in Venom, though. We got Blade Dance and we got uh, Finisher. This is... This is nice. Not the greatest in Venom. I mean, we don't have a Sneko Skull. Yet. Or in Venom looks bad compared to Accuracy Plus, which is not bad. Not bad at all. Another Flex Potion here, which I'll probably buy. If only I could afford the Helix in addition to the damage. But I think it's just going to be Accuracy Blade Dance. We might even consider Trip here. I could do Trip Carter Move. Ooh, that's spicy. That's too spicy. go. Oh, let's go. Yeah, the hope is that that'll get us to Act 3. In practice, it's going to depend a little bit. Uh, how much are shivs? Shivs should be 20 apiece, so this is a kill. Jesus. 20 damage shivs suddenly. Calculated gamble. Discard your entire hand. Draw that many cards. Yes. The block card. The upgraded block card. It's like a spirit shield. If spirit shield drew you cards. Hmm. Hmm. And this would be what we bought the Flex Potion for. Although, we might actually just have a kill even without using it. 
Finisher is going to be 8 times 5? Actually, that's a ton of damage. No, we don't need to use the Flex Potion at all. And I don't think I need to kill two of them, especially with 14 block coming next turn. I think we get to keep this potion. Actually, could have even made it more, huh? <laughs> Blarg. You will perish now. So I'll just do it this way. Get the free block next turn to counteract this final nerd. Glorious. Actually, a really good slaver's fight. All things considered. Get a blue candle. We can now play curse cards, as well as an orichalcum for a guaranteed six block. Also a third blade dance, which I'm going to go ahead and take, considering. Three's probably the upper limit on those for now. The cool bee, why did the silent cover her cloak in knives? She wanted to be sharply dressed. Eighteen is a full block, so we can go in Venom, Strike, Backstab. Boo this man. This silence. Boo, I say. Boo who? She would prefer to gain energy not on turn one of next turn. We've already got ancient tea set happening turn one of next combat. Let's actually delay that a bit. We flower on one. There we go. Power potion definitely broadly useful. How about an infinite blades plus? Start of each turn, add an extra shiv to your hand. It's actually not terrible. Feels a little unnecessary, though. I don't think we need any of these. We could just take second finisher. We need two copies of finisher for finisher mastery. And I have three blade dances, so... Yes, let's take the second finisher. And then, actually, upgrading Trip for Collector seems reasonable, but let's upgrade a Blade Dance instead. Or one more Shiv. Do I use the Power Potion in this fight? That's my main question. I think yes. Yes is the answer. Tools. Draw one, gain three block each turn. Perfect. Not the greatest of turn ones, but that's okay. Bye. Got some stuff happening here. Heck yeah. 
Ignore these stinky minions. Hit the collector. Kerblam. Thirty damage shivs, by the way. GG. Didn't even get to debuff us. That's a lot of damage output. The power of Phantasmal Killer plus accuracy plus vulnerable. These all multiply with each other, which is heckin' strong. Tough choice here. After Image plus versus Alchemize. I think with this many shivs, After Image is definitely tempting. Gotta say, that was a much easier act two than I expected after struggling through slime boss and seeing three boss relics I didn't really want to take. But uh, tough bandages and frozen egg have turned this around really quickly. Yeah, poor Oracalcum. Give me this. Give me that after image. Oh my goodness. And then we either get reduced card rewards for more energy off busted crown. Bonus strength to enemies for more energy off Philosopher's Stone, or we take the Ring of the Serpent, draw one more card each turn, but don't gain any more, any more energy. I think more energy is mandatory here. Oddly enough, I'm actually kind of okay with Busted Crown because we have a very good damage engine already. We have some pretty good cards in deck already. And I really don't want to give extra strength to heart. That said, tough bandages say Philo Stone has got to be better than Busted Crown because we're looking for draw discard effects. One calculated gamble would be better than the downside of Philosopher's Stone, essentially. So upon review, with, with tough bandages, Busted Crown has got to be worse than Philosopher's Stone, surely. Surely. We just get the card draw, and then we block for a bajillion, because we have tough bandages, and all will be well. Oh, and look at that. There's all the relics. Four relics this act. Now we're talking. Now we are talking. Start here. We can maybe go to this shop, but we'll probably proceed this way. That looks good. Well-laid plans would help this deck a lot. A lot, a lot. Hello there. This might just be a Blade Dance and then Calc Gamble sort of hand. We get block for each shiv we discard. I'm cool with that. Damage shivs. Beautiful. Draw two, discard two, or draw two, get five block. Five block or six block? Actually, this is also six block. These are both draw two, get six block. Except one of them is free and the other one is not. <laughs> hey, wait a minute. That's a backflip. Good enough. That's my spiker solution. I guess Dash and Invenom are my spiker solutions. Alright, Invenom the spiker. Uh-oh.
No. <laughs> Oh wait, no, I could have had poor Calcum block. Shoot. It's like, I'll block with after image. Nope. No, you won't. Alright, well, minus four. Good talk. Draw until we have seven cards in hand. It's not too bad, actually. Grab an expertise with a free upgrade. No days, please. Four, you say? Cultist potion could be nice. Dagger throw is fine, but not really that helpful, despite the relic interactions. Skip. Ah, uh, we do get offered Mind Bloom. A little bit too late for 999 gold to be impactful, but uh, fighting a boss for a rare relic is always welcome. Could also consider upgrading all the cards in this stack. We'd lose access to healing, but we would get more shivs, a lot more block off the block cards. Most of the really important stuff is already upgraded, though, thanks to Frozen Egg. So let's fight a boss. Get a rare relic here. I guess 999 gold with the blue candle wouldn't have been too bad. But again, we, we really needed to get that uh, a little bit earlier so I could go to two stores this act. With only one shop this act, I don't think the money would be worth it. I don't think so. Oh, good. Gamba, just Gamba. Just has some damage. Aya. Dale, second chance at life, and a terror with a free upgrade to apply 99 vulnerable. Makes trip a little bit redundant, but is pretty sweet. I'll take it. And I will gain 222 gold from our friend Don. Don the Red Mask. Revealing a secret trove of cornflakes. Secret passage full of tasty breakfast cereal. Yum. Horror of Too Cold, thanks for the prime sub. Welcome to the Cozy Sub Club. Hmm. Ah, 
Phantasmal Killer next turn. I like it. So we need you to die. Be exactly 24, huh? Sure. Reptomancer's a very spooky fight, potentially. Double Blade Dance this turn. Excellent draws. Should allow us to dispatch all these daggers, although I might need to flex potion, but I don't think I do. Yeah, four shivs, three shivs. Yeah, we don't need to flex potion here, although we easily could. Easily, easily could. And it would be a lot of extra damage. Let's see, if I flex potion, these will be base 18, so 27. 27 times... 8. Plus... A lot. Yeah, that is just gonna kill her. Yes. Sure. Seems reasonable to do, especially since we get the potion back immediately. Smiling Mask for a cheap remove at the next shop. Sure, that'll easily assure two more striker moves by the end of the run, which is quite nice, in addition to buying several other relics. Then Chaku will definitely help with energy. Caltrops could help with damage if we felt like we needed a bit more. Really good power for the late game. Looks like blocking is actually the difficult thing to do, though. So I'd prefer to find cards that help us block against heart a little bit better. Or else. I like to recall it the penultimate fire. Gives me more options at the final fire and skips any chance that I might forget. Forgetting is bad. That's expertise next. Here we go. Here we go. Now we're talking. Now we are talking. Twenty-five times nine. And I could Liquid Memories to kill Giant Head turn one if I felt the need, which I certainly don't. Got him. Ink Bottle, a great companion to Nunchaku. Now we're drawing more cards and getting more uh, energy. Distraction Plus. It's kind of cute. Genuinely could be helpful, too. Works nicely with Letter Opener. I'll try it. Bummer. The Repto Rematch. This time, it's personal. This won't kill the dagger. That's fine. Hold this spot for Time Eater. Probably should have skipped playing one of those. It's a free dodge and roll. If it works, it works. This finisher doesn't do anything, huh? Next turn could be pretty bad. Thankfully, we have liquid memories. Repto will attack us on this turn. But with double damage, maybe it's not so bad. And 
defend first. All right, expertise, draw me some cards. That's what I'm talking about. There we go. Perfection. Easy peasy. Second distraction. I think we should take it. Thousand Cuts or Cloak and Dagger both look better, but distraction is the card to master here. And I have a lizard tail. Let's do it. Event versus combat. I'll take an event. Ooh, it's a good one. Yeah, I'm Mori a bit late to do anything, unfortunately, but that's okay. That is a okay order, by the way. not play the neutralize because they want the nunchaku energy next turn. Beautiful. We get a gambling chip, allowing us to discard any number of cards on turn one, drawing a new card and gaining three block for each card that we discard. That's pretty all right. Is this block? Sure is. Who needs an anchor? Had we failed to master Masterful Stab up to this point, we would maybe consider a second one. Instead, we're going to try to do Double Distraction, Double Finisher here, and that's already a tall enough order. Thank you. Upgrade two skills at random. Kind of whatever. Turn one vulnerable, not bad. Notably, this removes artifact from shield and spear, which would help a lot. Two strength during elite combats, also helpful during shield during shield and spear. We're also fighting Donu and Dekka, and that would also be a fight where this helps. More paint doesn't seem like it's that good. There's a few skills in the deck that would appreciate an upgrade, but overall, it's like a couple block on a few cards. I don't think it's that good. So personally, I'm leaning towards Bag of Marbles and move forward. No, Big Biryani, you... Uh, the champion belt won't apply if the weakened is blocked by artifact, or the vulnerable is blocked by artifact. You have to actually apply the debuff. Sling only applies for two combats. Combats I'm not particularly worried about, so I don't think I'm going to take it. Pretty good turn one. That's an even better turn one. Let's just go egg row here. Thanks, bag of marbles. I mean, seriously, who even needs finisher? Nine times twelve, pathetic. Pathetic. Not maneuver with a plus. I don't think so. 
I still don't see how this is blocking heart. Hmm. Wow, really? <laughs> That's my bottom? All right. All right. Oh, we got a backflip. We got a backflip. Kidding me, man. Blade Dance, Blade Dance, Finisher are the bottom three. Okay. That's actually really good with Phantasmal Killer. So, honestly, this worked out. We drew almost every card in the deck on turn one. It's usually a good sign. Ornamental fan. Okay, that's going to help us block heart. Play three attacks in a single turn, gain four block. This is really important because it means playing three shivs went from being block negative to being block positive against heart's beat of death. Also, Doppelganger or Reflex. I don't actually have enough discard for Reflex to be any good. Despite the gambling, uh, the tough bandages, we found very little in the way of draw discard. So it's either Deflect or Doppel. And I think it's nothing. So if Blade Dances are block positive, then I'll upgrade Blade Dance. Be gone, artifact. Fools. Discard that, I guess. Oh my. Distraction made a distraction. The power. Well, we certainly blocked for a ton. It's a good sign. Hmm. Guess I should have done some of that damage to Decca. Not that it matters much. Draw! Easy. One boss down, one to go. No Time Eater, easy. I don't even think Time Eater would have been that difficult for this deck, but uh, not fighting Time Eater is even easier.
Hey there, Dunning Cougar. Today's the first run of. Uh, this is the first run of today, so you haven't missed anything. Not a single thing. Come on. Come on. Turn one. Let's get that in venom for the moment. That's a kill. Should have considered keeping that piercing whale, but I think we're fine here. Setting up ink bottle slash nunchaku for the spire elites fight could be important though. Spire spear and spire shield. For example, winning now seems kind of unfavorable. Gonna have to win this turn, but let's see how many cards we can at least play. That'll do. Nine and seven's pretty good. Zero on Happy Flower, but uh, we get Ancient Tea Set. I'm cool with that. Two thump, two thump, two thump, a deep pulsing dread can be felt throughout the room. You deal 2719 damage, which is the highest going into Act 4 score that I can remember in recent memory. That's a lot of damage. Wow. We must have perfected a lot of elites. Gary Spaceman, let's go for, for 300 bits. Heck yeah. Upgrade a block car? Actually, upgrade Neutralize feels kind of huge. We never really got access to better weakness. This could be really important for Heart. Full health. Kunai is here. Well-laid plans plus are here. Awesome. And I can remove a card. Uh, I think that's all we need, really. Classic Kunai GG. When you got three blade dances, it's definitely going to put in the work. We've got lots of good cards for dexterity scaling, too. Love it. Absolutely love it. Sadistic Nature and Venom is also pretty spicy. Onwards. 
Why do we need well-laid plans? In a pinch, it lets us line up the finishers with more impactful things. But it's also about... being able to retain key defensive cards. If we get a Piercing Whale, for example, just being able to hold onto a block card can matter a lot. Looks like a pretty okay turn one. Oh, it's a very okay turn one. Excellent. Okay, perfect. One, two, three, four, five energy I've got. Uh, yeah, I've got all the energy I need. I imagine we want to try to kill Spire Spear first. Although this is a situation where I could certainly advocate for going shield first. In order to... Actually, how much damage do we have in our opening hand here? We've got 80 plus 12 plus 8 times 9. So 80 plus 12 plus 72. 164 damage. That should actually be almost exactly enough to kill uh, Spire Spear on turn 1. So that sounds like the, like the correct play. The main reason I would consider going shield first in this fight would be because we're getting free block on turn 2 to deal with the nasty attack of Spire Spear on turn two. Whereas we don't have an easy answer to Spire Shield turn three attack. And yes, with Venom we get the rest of the way there for the Spire Spear kill, just to be clear. I also get to draw one more card off the ink bottle. And we could have also used Letter Opener. Oh, Trip is here, hello. Hmm. these here then. But just avoiding those two burns outright seems like the right move. Oh, that's the other thing that Well Aid's Plans does really well, is let us get a Phantasmal Killer to line up with other things. And Shuriken is here. We played three attacks in one turn, we gained strength. So we ended up at the very end with Ornamental Fan, Shuriken Kunai, all in quick succession, and the boot just for good luck, and a well-laid plans number two for also good luck, if we want one. And I think we do. How about Entropic Brew over Power Potion? Two random potions versus one useful potion. Nah, I like the potions we have. What a good run. What a great run, in fact. Oh, we should play this. So hoping to use the power potion maybe alongside well laid plans just in case we get wraith form. Maybe I'll use it next turn. Although something like tools the trade I'd want earlier. All right, fine. Uh, we can we could liquid memories if it's wraith form. Let's just drink it. Caltrops or accuracy or infinite blades. Actually, we said shivs are block positive. Might actually be infinite blades. So it activates our uh, Shuriken Kunai Ornamental Fan more reliably. Let's do that. More cards, please. We can 
either Blade Dance for big damage or Dodger Roll for some block next turn. I think I'd rather get the scaling. He took what? Nice. Wait, no, that's not nice at all. Help. Help. Pretty good liquid memories on a blade dance. We turn the blade dance into four shivs. We gamble the shivs away to get more draw and to get more block off the tough bandages. But then we have a bunch of shivs in the discard pile, so eh, may not actually be good. Distractional cost is two health. Actually, only one health to look at the contents. Sure. Let's see what this is. Good escape plan. Hey, not bad. That was technically very slightly favorable. I am going to do the liquid memories thing. Gamba. Gamba, Gamba. This turn is amazing. Can easily cap damage here. Blocking. Let's not worry about blocking. Now. Slightly block positive. Take me to exactly zero block or a calcum value. Easy. And they said the after image and the aura calcum would not play well together. How wrong they were. I gotta know, what's in this distraction? And that's right, we've got Lizard Tail in case we need it. I don't think we're going to. Ooh, free Adrenaline. four cards. Let's do that. One, two, three, four. I remembered. Fifty damage shoots. Very powerful. GG, Mr. Hart. 18 cost masterful stab, no problem. The power. Finish him. GG. What a fun time.
Hey there. If you enjoyed that video, watch this one next. And before you go, join us on Twitch and watch live. I'm there five days a week playing Slay the Spire, answering questions, and chilling with the community. Click the link in the description to follow right now. Ta-ta for now.